my long-term review of the Holosun 508T series of optics. I don't like having to admit when I have to eat crow, and I think I have to probably eat a little bit of crow. When I first got my 508, which was this one right here, and I threw it on uh, my Glock 45, and this was my primary demo gun for a long time with this optic, I, I was skeptical. So I'm just gonna get it right out of the bat, right out of the right of way. I did not want to like these optics. So reason why is number one, I thought it was a copy of the RMR, which we will compare it to. And I thought it's an imported optic. It can't be as good. It can't have as many features. I mean, it's cheaper for a reason, right? Well, we're gonna get into some of the details. My name is Dave Tim from Guns and Tactics. Thank you guys very much for spending a few minutes of your day checking out this video. I apologize it's taken me so long to make this video. I did a first look video a long time ago, but truth be told, I have been beating the snot out of this one as well as this one and a couple others that I have on other guns that I use for demos that I use as uh, loaner guns or whatever. I even have one on my duty gun. And I have to say, these uh, have really, really impressed me. So. Let's get right to it. Uh, first things first, disclosure, I'm not getting paid by Holosun. Uh, they're not sponsoring this or anything like that. I did receive one media sample, which is this guy right here. I have literally beaten the snot out of this one. And on this gun, with this optic, I probably have, no lie, 8,000 rounds of nine millimeter um, through this from teaching, attending classes, whatever it might be. And the thing is just held up. Uh, it's it's been awesome. A little bit about my background with red dots in general. I started shooting a red dot on duty about that 2015, 2016 mark. I started training with it because I would start to see more and more students come to my classes with red dots and I wanted to kind of hop on that train. A couple of years ago, I was brought on by a national company to go around the country teaching red dot instructor courses to law enforcement agencies, whether it's contract agencies or open enrollment classes around the country. So I've been doing that for a year and a half, give or take. And it's taken me to all different areas of the country to meet all different regions of cops to see different standards, different training doctrine, different performance levels. And that's given me another idea of sample sizes, not just of what I have, but now as a larger group to see what holds up and what doesn't, what optics fail, what doesn't. And what I'm seeing is more and more hollow suns are showing up at classes. When I was first starting, it was pretty much all Trigicon RMRs. Now we're starting to see more and more Polo Suns, and they are just performing really, really well. I, I generally just don't see them fail. I can't think of a time that I have seen a 508 fail that was not a user issue, i.e. bad screws or whatever, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. So my experience and my students' experience with the 508 have been very, very favorable. What the purpose of this review is, yes, we'll talk about some specs, but I really wanna get into why somebody would choose this versus an RMR. And for those of you guys wondering, uh, I've had a lot of experiences with RMRs. This was actually one of my first red dot handguns that I started you know, using back in 2015, 2016. Uh, this is a Glock 34 and it has just, you know, it's been a beast. Uh, this optic was secondary. I had a type one RMR on it that actually ended up taking a, a dirt nap. So I had to put a type two on there, but this is what really got me into the red dot game. So like I said, when Holosun came out with this 508 and everybody was raging about it, I was just like, I don't know. I just don't think it's going to be better. And I, I do think it's a better optic. So I'm going to put chapter markers in the description below if you want to skip along to a certain part. Let's get pricing and specs out of the way. And then I want to get into why somebody would pick this and what I like about it better than the Trijicon RMR. So first things first for pricing, they are available right now. Several distributors have them. We'll have a couple of links in the description where you can check them out. If you do use those links, it does help out the channel. If you don't use those links, that's fine too. But let's talk about pricing. Right now they are available. One of my favorite dealers from Rainier Arms, the red is available for $370 street price. The green is $400 street price. MSRP on both of them is a little higher, but again, uh, street price is a little lower. Like I said, we'll have links in the description below. But as far as specs go, it does use an RMR footprint, which means that the mounting platform or your cut on the optic is going to be the same as your Trijicon RMR, 508, SRO. You'll commonly see those things for plates and adapters and things like that because they all use the same footprint on the bottom. So that RMR standard footprint is what the 508 uses and it is an open emitter similar to the RMR, which means you have one pane of glass here and then the emitter points up uh, to the glass and reflects your, your dot or your reticle. As far as specs go, which people think are important, you do have 
up to 50,000 hours of battery life on a single 1632 battery. We'll get into a little bit more of the battery compartment here too. 12 brightness settings, 10 are daylight, two night vision compatible. It is made out of titanium and it has a convenient battery tray on the side, which like I said, we'll talk about here in a little bit. As far as the size and weight, it's very similar in size to a Trigicon RMR. However, the window is actually slightly bigger as you can see here. The dimensions are 1.78 inches by 1.15 by 1.15, and the weight is two ounces. The operating temperatures and storage temperatures, which are something that are important to me being in Minnesota, are working temp negative 30 degrees Celsius all the way up to 60 degrees Celsius, IP67 rating for waterproof. The adjustments are easy. It's one MOA adjust. We have the windage and elevation, and then it does come with this little tool right here, which you use to not only service the battery, but also to make your adjustments. So I recommend don't losing this. For the full specs, you can check out Holosun's webpage. Okay, enough of the mumbo jumbo. Let's get to why you would pick this over an RMR. Number one is the side mounted battery tray. That right in and of itself is a huge logistical upgrade for law enforcement armorers. With the RMR, you have to take the optic completely off put new battery on, and then deal with retorquing, thread locker, confirming zero, all that stuff, which is not generally something most departments will let the end user or the officer do. That's an armorer or instructor or range master function. So that's a huge con to the RMR. With the Holosun, we use the included tool, we pop out the battery tray, 1632 goes out, 1632 goes in. Speaking of battery, it also does have a solar panel for brightness uh, detection, as well as a battery backup. So even if the battery goes dead, I can be out in the sun and I do have a solar panel battery backup, if you will, which works out actually pretty awesome. Uh, I generally change my batteries once a year. I don't know if I've truly drained a battery, but having that is just a nice little touch. Now I will say using this as the auto adjust is the one thing I don't like is that it uses what ambient light is here to determine how bright the dot should be even though I'm looking down there and with you know bright lights like the mod light uh, the new sure for a turbo coming out the cloud pistol light which who knows if that's you know, when it's going to come out but uh, I definitely want that forward sensor like what is in the SCS which don't tell I'm not supposed to be talking about this very much just yet but the SCS has the best auto adjust out of any pistol red dot I've, I've seen to date. So I really, really am liking this. But uh, for those of you guys running this in a duty capacity or whatever, you're just gonna turn it on, leave it on. That's what I recommend. That's what I teach in my classes. So uh, I do like that it does have the solar battery backup. The other cool thing I like about the battery is it does have a low battery indicator. So when you power it up and it starts blinking, that's a clue. Hey, battery's gonna go pretty soon. I need to put a new battery in. Now, the only thing with the battery is the 1632 is not as common as the 2032. You still can find them at like Batteries Plus. Uh, I think I even found them at a Walmart once, but otherwise I just go to Amazon and I buy some good quality 1632s, Duracells if you can find them, Panasonics aren't as bad. Uh, sometimes I've had to get, I can't remember if it was Energizer or an off-brand, but uh, you know, try to stock up. I keep some 1632s in my range bag, but I just change them out once a year. So really no issues or complaints with battery life. And I just like the features that they put into this with the battery, the solar, everything like we've just talked about. Number two, different reticle choices. You can choose between a dot, the dot and halo, or the halo alone. Now the halo alone, I actually kind of want to play around with, with a shotgun and kind of see if I can keep like what distance my buckshot pattern would keep within that halo. I think that may be kind of a cool use for that. Uh, however, the dot and halo is really cool under night vision. It's very distinct. You know that when you're looking through, you know, passive aiming without a laser or anything like that, that that is your reticle because with the dot and somebody else's IR laser, the two look very similar. So are you looking at his IR laser? Are you looking at your dot? But once you have that halo reticle, it's very distinct when you are looking through night vision and your pistol optic that that is exactly what you are looking at. So I love that. Number two is I've had several people with colorblind issues coming through my classes and they have found with that halo reticle, they immediately can pick up on it. It offers a contrast, it offers a distinct shape so that they again are getting all the benefits of the red dot, but now they're getting that distinct outline so that they have that aiming capability that they struggle with with some colors and some uh, dots you know those with astigmatisms might see bursts and stuff but again that halo just gives people different options now generally speaking i prefer 
dot only. I run it dot only unless I'm doing night vision, but I like to demo the halo for people who might have a preference for it. It comes in green or red, depending on your preference. I have both and I go back and forth. Green is a little bit more battery efficient, I am told. However, there's just something about red where I feel like the red on the brightest just looks a little bit brighter to my eye than the brightest on the green, but the green looks maybe a little bit more crisp to me. And that could just be my eyes. I do have a, a slight astigmatism uh, that I'm starting to get as I'm getting older. So again, that's just my opinion, my view, but I like them both. yards not too shabby not my best not my worst the other thing that i like is that there is vulcan reticles available uh, that is basically like a huge ring with a dot so that way as you start to tilt the gun in you'll start to see the edge of the ring but when you're looking through it normally you'll just see the dot because that ring is on the outside of the window if you will but again it just shows that holo sun is willing to work with other partners they're willing to innovate they're willing to continue innovating unlike somebody else don't want to say who that it kind of, let's be honest, they've kind of remained stale. And I really don't want to bash them because they are a powerhouse in the optics industry, but the reality is they've kind of become stale, whereas uh, nimble companies like Holosun are really moving forward and doing a lot of good things. The last big reason that I think that the Holosun 508 is truly an RMR killer is the price. Not only does it have more features, but it's doing it at a better price. Right now, Holosun, with $370 street price, for the law enforcement first responders and agencies, you guys can even get a little bit better pricing out there. You're not going to get a Trigicon RMR for that price. You're just not going to. So it beats it in price. It beats, your, beats it in features. It has really good dur uh, durability. Aaron Cowan from Sage Dynamics, who is another Red Dot instructor in the industry who travels, uh, he's more of a household name than I am. He's done drop testing. These are very durable optics. I've done drop testing and I did break one, okay? So I did crack the lens on one when I was doing a drop test and that was an optic that I've dropped numerous times. And sure enough, I must have dropped it just that right to get that small little crack. However, the dot worked just fine. I did send it back, they did replace it. So the warranty was pretty good. Uh, so customer service wise, that kind of thing. Anything you know can break if you drop it, anything man-made. So just because it passes a drop test doesn't mean it'll pass that drop every single time. And for what it's worth, I've seen RMRs break and crack as well. So everything can break, whatever. Uh, shootability. Love the shootability of it. It has a larger window than the RMR. I'm showing you some comparison footage, both with Glock slides, so you can see. Just in case you're wondering, the sights are the exact same from Ameriglow, so you don't have to worry about any you know, sight obstructing the window. But you can see that the Holosun does have a little bit bigger of a window compared to the RMR. Now the RMR arguably might be a little bit more rugged because of that shape, that top kind of arch on the window. But again, the Holosun 508, I would definitely give the stamp of duty grade because there's a lot of agencies running it. Actually, just earlier this week, I uh, helped out a small agency in my area install about six or so of these on their new Glocks. So these are wholeheartedly what I recommend uh, to anybody looking to buy an open emitter optic. As far as water resistance, weather resistance, one of the things I do in my classes is if it's winter time, we'll pack them full of snow and we'll talk about how to clear that. We also take water, we talk about how to clear that stoppage. We, you know, shooting through those stoppages because those are situations that a law enforcement officer might encounter. And the Holosun, I've never had an issue with uh, one of the 508s taking a water issue. True story, I had another optic from another company. As soon as we poured water on it, boom, red dot died. And that was a large American company that makes a large optic, I'm not gonna say who, starts with an L. And that dot died as soon as we poured water on it, which was kind of a bummer because uh, you know, they're a good company, they take care of people too. Now they did make it right for that student, he sent it in, they fixed it, but knock on wood, the only issues I've seen in class with Holosun 508s is user issues and particularly user installed issues where they don't use the right screws, they don't use the right thread locker, they're not you know, using proper torque or whatever. So keep in mind, uh, those are legit issues. Other features that I do like are the shake awake settings. Now, if you read the manual, which come on, let's be honest, how many people actually take the time to read the manual. In fact, this one is still in the wrapper out of this box. They come with these little plastic boxes that comes with a wrench and a cleaning cloth. Now, yes, I have read the manual of other ones. Like I said, I own a bunch. 
take the time to read the manual. It's gonna talk about battery, it's gonna talk about the shake awake setting, it's gonna talk about how to change the reticle, uh, all the stuff that really you should be doing. Read the manual, can't stress that enough. Uh, it goes over all the settings. So many times when people struggle, there's a lot of people that come to my class where I say, okay, go ahead and put it in auto setting. We're gonna try a drill with this and they have no idea how to do that. Thankfully, I'm familiar with them. It's not hard to do, uh, you know, or put it out of audio in a manual, whatever, but read the manual. Or sometimes I'll get somebody saying, hey, why is it blinking? Well, it has a low battery indicator. So again, read the manual. I can't stress that enough. Take the time, you know, next time you go poop, instead of scrolling on your phone, read the manual. I've carried this on duty. I recommend people to carry it on duty. I recommend people to carry it off duty. I don't care if you duty grade or not, but the reality is it's just a really, really good optic, whether it's competition rig, an everyday carry rig, a duty rig, something to keep your family safe or whatever. I just am very, very happy with these optics and that's why I own so many of them. I bought many on my own. If you guys have any questions about this, Red Dot related, firearms related, or anything else, we do have a monthly QA series where at the end of the month I answer your questions plus we give away a prize. You can either leave a comment in the comment section below, try to include a question mark so I can search for that, or better yet is to email us at the email address shown below, which is the QA at gunsandtactics.com. I get those, then we put the QA episode towards the end of the month of every month. If you guys like the content, please like, share, subscribe. Check us out on Facebook online, although we just got hacked on Facebook, so check out our backup group too, but also check us out online. We have all of our content online. It's a great daily thing with news, updates, industry things, all sorts of cool stuff for the shooter. And if you guys feel so generous, you like the content, you wanna help us keep the lights on, please consider supporting us on Patreon. We do have different levels with different benefits, but ultimately we do sincerely appreciate your generosity. Thank you guys very much for watching and have a great day.